Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspirational Moments. I am Reverend Glendale Miller from the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. This program is designed to inspire, motivate, and encourage as you make a difference right where you are. I invite you in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful this morning for yet another marvelous day that you have made. We are so appreciative of how you've kept us, sustained us, and undergird us. Bless our efforts today. May your people be strengthened and encouraged. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. I point you this morning to Psalms 77. And I read for you verse number three. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. This morning I want to challenge you for just a few minutes from the idea, stop complaining. Stop complaining. Yes, you heard it correctly. Stop complaining. Our main focus this morning is on verse number three. I'm sure that we all can find ourselves in the midst of this verse. And I thought to point you there because we all, from time to time, complain. We all are guilty of complaining along the way. I came across a song written by Reverend Paul Jones entitled, I Won't Complain. It says, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some lonely nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days, they outweigh my bad days. So I won't complain. The next line says, sometimes the clouds are low. I can hardly see the road. And I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But the Lord knows what's best for me. Although my very eyes, they can't see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Here's what I have learned. We love to sing that song. And I have done it a few times before. And when the song is sung, The anointing of the Lord descends and the power of God rests heavily upon who is ministering in the song. Because the song speaks to our present situations. But the bottom line is the fact that for the majority of us, it is a great song, but in reality, we do complain. We complain about everything. This particular psalm was written by a Jew who lived during the time of exile. 
those were difficult times for the people of Israel. They were scattered away from their homeland. And as he looked at his nation, the psalmist could not see any hope of an end to the hardship his people were going through. We can feel his agony in this chapter. He was pouring his heart out to God. He was sad. He was tired. He was depressed. In such a situation, there were many questions, unanswered questions, and he found himself pouring out these questions to God. Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Have you ever had some moments like that? where you felt like God had abandoned you. I can tell you, brothers and sisters, it's not a good feeling. These are honest questions being presented in this text for our consideration. A man who is trying to understand the meaning of what he is going through. These are questions we ask too. They are forced out of our heart when we go through hardship and pain. Has God really cast him and his people out forever? The writer found himself in a dry place a spiritual wilderness. He felt as though emptiness had taken his soul. Asaph, who wrote this psalm, penned the words while in a spiritual wilderness. Asaph was the worship leader for Israel, a famous and skilled musician. King David had appointed him chief of the Levites who provided music at the ceremony held when the Ark of the Covenant was brought back to Jerusalem. He wrote 11 of the Psalms recorded in the Bible and was instrumental in many others. This praise and worship leader is the same one who cries out to God and says, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. When worship leaders are in a dry place, responsible for ushering God's people to higher points in praise. When they find themselves in a dry place, it can alter the tone and set the mood or atmosphere in a in an awkward and troubling position can i tell you this morning there is a difference between a desert and a wilderness desert 
is caused by sin. Therefore, there is a need for repentance. Wilderness is a place of growth. Therefore, there is a need for trust. How we respond in each is critical to our spiritual growth process. So the question is, how do you survive your wilderness? We need to realize that wilderness experiences are a part of everyday life. Sooner or later, my family, you will find yourself in such an experience. If you find a Christian that says they never experienced the wilderness in their Christian walk, they never experience a spiritual dry time. They most likely have not been with Christ very long. Always act like they are up all the time. But I want you to know that you're just fooling yourself. David, a man after God's own heart, cried out, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Cried out to God day and night. Jeremiah called the weeping prophet. For these things I wept. Elijah hid in a cave saying, God, just take my life. Peter threw his hands in the air and saying, you know what, you guys, do what you want to do. But I'm just going fishing. When we find ourselves going through the wilderness in our life, we are forced to take one of two directions. We get to disappoint. We, we get to disappointed with, we are disappointed with God for not helping us or protecting us. We lose faith and question God's goodness and his power. We ought to keep praying and drawing strength and comfort from God. Where our faith is strengthened, we ought to hang on in there in the midst of our hardship. I believe that is the challenge that all of us ought to pay close attention to. The fact remains that too many of us like to complain. We especially like to complain in order to make the problems of life someone else's fault. It's too hot, too cold, too fast, too slow, too expensive, too cheap, too dry, too wet. I'm not being treated right. Life is not fair. Did you hear what they said to me or about me? I can't believe how I was treated. Complaining is basic to human nature, but it is also a product of faith in crisis. We must be careful not to complain. And I have discovered that we feel most insecure when we begin to demonstrate this attitude called complaining. Can faith really help us overcome 
our drive to complain, how quickly we forget, how quickly we move on from security to insecurity, how quickly we move from confidence to worry, how easily we equate God's available means to provide for us to the limited scope of what we can see, predict, and recognize. How quickly we limit God to the range of our own possibilities. The psalmist admits to it and says, listen, I complained. And he's saying to us this morning, stop complaining. As we read through the text, it almost appears as though Asaph is about to lose it. Anybody ever been there? You felt like you were about to lose it? Maybe if you just lose it for a minute or two, you will feel better. At your breaking point, nobody better say a word to you. Don't even look in your direction. But notice what happens in our text. Asaph uses the term, I will, three times. Verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. I will remember the wonders of all. And verse 12, I will meditate on all your works. When we read the first nine verses, for a moment we thought he is going to lose all hope. But verse 10 turns everything all around. He refuses to focus on his situation. He refuses to continue to complain because he knows God has not changed. We change. Circumstances change. God will not change. God called Adam in the Garden of Eden and he asked him, Adam, where are you? Not where I left you. God did not move. Adam moved his position. Here is what I really like about this passage. The psalmist did not have all the answers to his problems. He did not know how long the hardship would last did not ask God for a timetable or time frame. He did not wait until he saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Yet this he knew. God had delivered his people before and he will do it again. Hallelujah. Because what he has done in the past reveal God's heart for the people. His love, God's love for us has never changed. The breakthrough is not in our complaining. Your breakthrough is in your praise. After the psalmist found himself complaining, he realized that he had to make a turn in order for God to bless him. The turn he made was away from complaining to praising. I believe this morning we ought to learn from the psalmist. Praise is a powerful weapon. You ought to praise in spite 
of your problems, in spite of the pain and the predicament that you find yourself in, you ought to find time to give him praise. I believe this morning you've got a reason to give God thanks. You've got a reason to bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, glory to God, shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's what you ought to be saying this morning. Stop complaining and start thanking him. Stop finding fault and pointing fingers. Use your energy, use your time. Use this particular moment to give him some thanks. Our Father in heaven, I pray this morning that you would Charge your people with the strength and the courage that they need that they would stop complaining and begin to give you thanks. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, let's take a moment and bless him this morning. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. You've been so good. Mm, you've been, been so good. This is what you ought to be saying today. I just want to thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, you have. You made. You made a way. Yes, you have. Out of no way. You removed all obstacles. Out of my way. You made a way. You made a way. Oh, you made, you made, you made a way. Oh, I just want, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to give you honor. Glory, glory. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, you get me? Glory to God. You're coming out of this. We're coming out of this as a country, as a nation. We're coming out of this pandemic. We're coming out of this economic downturn. We're coming out of it. All you need to do is open up your mouth and say, I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing with us on inspirational moments. May the blessings of God be upon you now and always. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, be encouraged this morning. Thank you, thank you, hallelujah, we bless your name, thank you Lord, thank you, come on make that decision, make that decision right now, glory, glory. 
glory, 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 hallelujah, yes, Lord.